I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we're working on restoring our sailing yacht. Some of you might think we're crazy taking on the challenge of restoring this boat and creating a life less ordinary. And we're sure there will be blood, sweat and tears, but it'll all be worth it when we embark on our epic adventure around the world. Hello. Morning. Morning everybody. First thing we've got to do this morning is go and get some more gas. This is the first time I've seen the boat since Melissa um, painted it. Um, I'm absolutely blown away. So this is my first view of the boat having been painted. Uh, and it's just spectacular. Uh, have a look at this, everybody. I'll show you around because it's my first view and, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just so excited. Oh, look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. I don't know how many of you um, watch many of the other sort of boat restoration channels, but there's one that you should really be watching if you enjoy this kind of stuff. Boat restoration, boat work and sailing. Um, and the one I'm referring to, you've probably never heard of. It's a channel called SV Blown Away, okay? Um, and uh, I'm gonna repeat that, SV Blown Away. Go and search them, link in the description. Ian is a, a phenomenal engineer. Uh, phenomenal welder um, and lives on a steel boat. Uh, he, I think he's ex-military as well uh, so he's got an enormous amount of experience and I go to him for a lot of help and advice um, but let me show you one of the things that I was discussing with Ian only last week. So because these um, drain plugs weren't taken out when the boat was laid up the bilge was full of oil and sludge and water and all kinds of nasties and of course the thing to do is clean it from the inside but we can't it's far too deep we can't get at it. it's underneath the engine so without lifting the engine out we can't get in there we can't inspect it uh, and one part is under the engine the other part is under the prop shaft both extremely inaccessible uh, having spoken to Ian he has actually got an access hatch cut in the side of his keel that he can cut out, clean the inside of the bilge and then weld back in. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut out a slightly larger area, enough for me to get my hand in, clean that whole area and then I'll weld a piece in with nicely radiused corners uh, so that we can do a proper repair to the bottom of the keel and put drop proper drain plugs in there as well. And while Andy's doing that, I'm going to start sanding the top sides. <laughs> using a, a hole saw to cut out the corners of the piece that I'm going to remove so that we've got properly radiused edges on these sections. saws falling inside good job I'm cutting an access panel what I've got there now look though is four holes so I can join them up to have a nice patch with radius edges that there is a huge piece from the bilge under the engine that we cannot get to without removing the engine. And half the reason I've taken it out is because it's rotten all the way along the bottom anyway.
just switching to the GoPro uh, so that I can have a look uh, under the bilge, under the engine, and see what it looks like. Uh, GoPro and a torch. And this here is the engine bilge. And we've got a, a little sail making thing. And we've got a screw for the rocker cover that Chris dropped. Let's put that there. And we've got a spring and a whole load of disgusting gunge. So before we go any further with this, we can now clean this bilge and paint it white. So that when we look down from the inside, it may end up being yellowy white because the coal tar epoxy affects the uh, white epoxy and turns it a kind of horrible cigarette yellow color. But it's still gonna be a heck of a lot easier to see what's going down here, uh, going on down here with it like this than with it just being uh, black down here. Marvelous. Let's get that cleaned out. So we got all the oil and sludge out first. This is just there you go. This is just dirty water. In fact, there wasn't much oil in there. To be fair, was there? No. Which is always a good thing. <laughs> Now, our boat will definitely sink. There you go. Two huge holes in the bottom of the keel. One, the forward one, is in the bilge under the engine, uh, which is completely inaccessible otherwise, and is full of gunk and has been like that for years. So we ha absolutely have to inspect it properly. The other one is in the bilge just half of the engine under the prop shaft, and it does actually have a bilge pump in, so we can get to that bilge pump now. Uh, but we can service that, clean it, we can um, uh, inspect all the, the metalwork, paint it all up, and then weld a patch back in. Uh, just been talking to Ed from the yard, and yeah, what I'm going to do is put a board around the edge on the inside um, to create a, a lip to welter. You, you'll see, it's, um, it's a really good idea. Uh, anyway. They've been cleaned out, just hosed out with some water, and I'm gonna let them just drip drain. And while that's going on, Melissa and I are now both uh, sanding uh, to get all of the, the old rust off the old paint, uh, so we can prep to start looking at painting the top sides once we've done the welding and the chain locker. We're also trying to decide on a color for the top sides. Um, we really like kind of dark navy blue, but a lot of people are saying to us, don't do that. You'll be baking hot when you get down to the Med in the Caribbean and these hot climbs, you'll be, you'll be really struggling with a navy blue boat with navy blue top sides. So the other color that we were both really yeah, like. Something a bit different, but not. Yeah. <laughs> so how about silver? Like a metallic gray, metallic silver, not kind of battleship gray, a little bit lighter than that with a bit of fleck in it, perhaps. Um, and then we can, you know, the anti-foul color doesn't really matter, but white, Coach roof, white pilot house, um, it's pale grey uh, kind of kiwi grip or whatever on the grippy areas, but then the top sides here, we're thinking in like a, a metallic, yeah, silver, metallic silver. Can you let us know in the comments what colour you think, whether you think dark blue would really make us bake in the hotter weather, uh, what's going to be bad maintenance? I mean, I know Odd Life, they went for orange. And I really like that, but if we did it in orange, people would accuse us of copying for them. But the other advantage of orange I is... I don't want orange because my hair will clash. There you go. Yeah. Melissa doesn't want orange anyway. But if we also, if you do it in orange, when you get rust runs, it doesn't show because rust is orange. Uh, so, um, and I think the same would be true of blue because it's a dark colour, but, but pale silver. But at the same time, we want to see where the rust is. Yeah, we do want to keep an eye on it. If, if rust appears, we want to be able to see it. So. Yeah, and also if we paint it silver, it'll look a little bit like a posh ovni, hmm. which it isn't. Anyway, back to work. <laughs> so we're just having a good clean out of this, um, which is below the engine, um, and then we're going to paint it white. Um, we didn't want to remove the engine because there's no need to. Um, 
But yes, yeah, so we're gonna paint it and then we can weld, weld the plate in. Let me show you where I'm up to. Just working on this front one to begin with. That's the bilge behind the engine under the prop shaft. Um, but this one, uh, equally inaccessible. We've just been inside to see if we could um, to see if we could <laughs> paint the back of it, and we might be able to paint the back of this with a paintbrush on a stick. But it's basically you can't get to it. So here's what we're going to do. This one I've now rounded, beveled the edges. Uh, sorry, rounded the corners uh, and beveled the edges at 45 degrees. Now that that's done, I'm going to cut some plate and weld all the way around the edge so it's a lip but on the inside so that when the patch goes in it goes in and I can weld it but weld it to this and to the, the, the backing plate if you like so that's the plan I might even just put a single piece on the back of there actually might be easier than trying to put a board around the edge yeah I might do that we'll see how are you getting on? I'm alright um, I've made this, which is, I'll show you where it goes in a minute. I'm just cleaning it up with the Terracou blaster to prep it really nicely before I tack it in place. But basically this goes in through the hole and onto the back of the metal so that when I put the patch in, I've got something to weld to uh, and it, I can really burn the amps in. So look at this, right? And hopefully you can see that. This piece now, goes inside here like this and up against the back of that and it means that I can I can weld that in place where are we there we go I can weld that in place um, and then I can put the patch in on top of it and I can clamp this nice and tight to there uh, and then I can still get my hand inside to paint all of this uh, just leaving an unpainted area to weld the patch in uh, but it means that I can really put a lot of heat into this weld so that it get, gets really good penetration uh, when I come to uh, to weld that piece, the, the patch in on the outside. So the next step for me now is to clamp this in, into place and tack it. It doesn't even have to be welded all the way round um, but uh, it's just a backing plate so tack that in place with the stick welder because we've got gas but it's too windy to uh, use the gas welder today. It's going to nip that corner off, it doesn't quite fit perfectly. So that's now tacked in place. I'm just gonna grind those welds back so that the piece that I make to go in there goes in nice and flush. And then we can paint all of this. Um, just leave the outside edge where I'm gonna uh, weld in the, the actual plate to the outside. Cool. Okay, so this is my patch that's going in to the keel on top of that frame thingy that I've uh, tacked in place. Um, it's rounded corners, beveled edges at 45 degrees, um, and it'll be welded to the keel itself and all the way through to that backing plate. And there's a slight, ever so slight curve in it to take into account the fact that the curve has got this very, very slight curve. Um, obviously, front to back, it comes to a point, but the, the portion of this, I don't know if you can see that, it's just that much curve necessary. So the next thing to do, we've finished cleaning it out, we're going to paint out the inside of that bilge through the access hole that we've made with the two-pack primer. Um, and we're not going to weld this in today because we've got to wait for the paint to go dry and solid so that I'll probably weld this in on Saturday. But what I will do is paint the back of this so that uh, I'll probably leave just a strip around the edge because we're not going to be able to get any paint to that bit but uh, 
I don't want the paint contaminating the weld. But I'll paint the back of this and then I can paint the outside of course once it's welded in place and ground flat. But um, that's the finish that you get with that T Turku, the Teraku Turku thing. It's just absolutely splendid. And of course, we did have the whole hull shot blasted because it would have taken forever and a day to do with the Teraku Turku thing. But when you're doing a small piece like this or bits like the cockpit, it's the perfect tool for the job. I'm waffling. That's my patch. Just mixing up some epoxy to paint out the bottom of that bilge. Um, not sure how much you're going to be able to see of this, but uh, we'll see. So, I'm sure you couldn't see very much of that, but let me show you what I've managed to do. Um, Melissa's still sanding up there, but um, let's just see if we can get any sort of view of this. This is now the bilge under the engine, which is painted out in white, albeit a bit roughly, and it's kind of just tipped in there and scooshed around. But what it means is that that bilge is now white, uh, so that when we look down from above, we can see if there's any, any big problems down there occurring. Um, this lip is already welded on to the back and it performs a backing it per, uh, pr provides a backing plate for me to weld that other piece in the, the panel that I showed you um, we've got to wait for all that to dry and then of course I'll grind off where I'm going to grind off the paint where I'm going to actually weld and then we've got to do that bit um, but yeah the, this is these are just the only two bits of the bilge that we really could not get to from the inside so um yeah good progress quite pleased um what else is going on <sighs> steady progress uh sanding the sides of the boat um then the next thing to do once we've sanded uh the sides of the boat we've been sort of taking it in turns because it's really physical and hard work is this line here is where the shot blaster kind of went up to uh and you can see the the kind of break point where the old fairing the filling was because it's quite heavily fared this boat so we've now got to kind of sand down to here and re-fare that back in with some new fairing from west system uh, and make a nice smooth transition so that's it guys that's the end of another episode of sailing melody uh, we have uh, chopped out one part of the uh, bilge and made a nice neat plate to go in and sanded a lot of the port side yeah, top sides half the port side probably yeah and uh, again, doesn't seem like a lot probably, but uh, it's actually, the thing is about making those patches, um, because they're below the waterline, I'm being much, much more particular about the fit and the angles and the radiuses and the chamfering because it's a critical area. Uh, it's, so it's much more important to get those patches perfect. Yeah, we don't want to sink. We don't want to sink. So stuff in the cockpit, it's less critical to get the corners and the radiuses perfect but stuff under the waterline one patch takes an entire day you'll remember when i did these patches in the pilot house i did four patches in a day fine but they're not critical ones but there you go thanks so much for watching see you next week bye bye, bye.